recommendation number six is to ensure that nurses engage in lifelong learning. Uh, before this IOM study, I was on another IOM study uh, that had to do with uh, continuing education of the health professions. It didn't get as much fan fanfare. We, you know, we, we, uh, we shut down the IOM website when we released the, uh, this study because there were so many hits. Uh, and so it was down for two hours. We got over a million hits uh, of, of people uh, wanting to uh, read that report. This lifelong learning piece, the reason I share that with you is uh, the IOM study before that said, we are not going to have a healthier nation unless we deal with the issues of the health professions continuing competency. Competency. Not that I go read something and then take a little test and get my CDUs, right? <clears throat> but that we actually have a way to validate that the individual is still competent. Now, I said my background is in perinatal nursing. Uh, when I'm, I'm doing rounding in, in labor delivery or my neonatal intensive care unit, my staff are often saying, let me go put on some scrubs. I said, I'm not going to harm no babies. <laughs> You know, I, I can't take my 70s knowledge and go try to apply it, uh, and, you know, in the care of those babies. Lifelong learning for the purpose of keeping the patient safe, of really about doing good. Doing good, I say doing good uh, as opposed to just saying do no harm. Because, you know, it's, it's a chance, you know, spoken a coin, you know, when you talk about doing no do, do, Not really, because harm can happen, you know, the whole instance of rare events. You could have been doing all, all, the, all the right things, but a rare event occurs and harm occurs. Uh, so it's do good. And to do good, you have to have knowledge. And you have to have continuous infusion of that knowledge. Because we are not, we don't just stand still like this. Things have changed around us. Systems change around us. So we need nurses, leaders to play an active role in supporting lifelong learning as a key strategy. That is an area for this school that I hope you will take up. So, so it's not about your, just your production capacity of, in, rela in relationship to students who are coming in, but really how do you, what's your role in terms of supporting lifelong learning for the, the nurses and other members of the health profession? Recommendation number seven is enable nurses uh, to lead change to advance health. So we need to prepare nurses to be leaders. And you know, the, the, there's so much opportunity for nurses to lead, but we are not out, out, out there doing it. And some individuals need, think they need permission. All right, you think you need permission, let's give them permission to lead. <laughs> let's put it in programs. Leadership is a practice art. It's a practice art. So you have to provide opportunities for individuals to lead at all levels. And so I gave an example of the AOE nurse management program, but there are many other types of development programs. Recommendation number eight says we, we wish, we wish we had more evidence. And, and because we don't have as much evidence as we need, we need to generate more evidence about the workforce. We need to move from uh, thinking about the uh, nursing shortage as a supply issue and look at it as a demand issue. That means you have to go out there and find out what's the demand for nursing. What, is, what, what does that mean in terms of uh, rethinking the workforce, both in terms of the production of the workforce as well as the use of the workforce? And as you know, the Workforce Commission was not funded. Uh, and so, so there are others out there now trying to look at that funding, uh, including some of the, uh, the, the foundations. So now we have a campaign for action, shared by Sheila Burke, uh, and, and is again made up of consumers, physicians, Purchasers of healthcare services, funders of healthcare services. Uh, we have four nurses on it, but it's not the, the main group. These are our threads. The campaign believes that we must uh, improve the education of the workforce uh, and, and work with that, provide opportunities for nurses to lead, focus on improving access to primary care, and we need more data and we need to do it in an intercollaborative way. So, we, I hope that each of you have joined the Ohio Action Campaign. How many of you know about the Ohio Action Campaign? Okay. Well, you know, the Ohio Action Campaign is aimed at trying to implement these eight recommendations here in the state of Ohio. And we, we need you to be a part of that. This is a broad uh, group of stakeholders 
who are in, engaged in doing, may not, may not take on all eight recommendations at once. Uh, so in the in California Action Campaign, uh, we're taking on recommendations two, four, and seven first. We will get to the, get to the others, but it needs people who are willing, willing to lead. Uh, you know, engage with your state boards of nursing to change the, the scope of practice, you know, so that the nurses can practice uh, based on their education. Participate in the local and state committees. AARP, so every AARP in all 50 states is the home for the action campaigns. And they are willing to work with, with you. Uh, conduct your inter internal assessment of your own organization uh, about where you, you know, where you are in, in terms of those recommendations. And commit to being the change that you, you want to see in others. So we have a system. Just to recap, there's fragmented, there's not enough in, uh, integration across uh, providers, uh, a system that rewards buy-in and results in lower quality of care. We continue to have a lot of health care disparities. This is all about why we're doing this. Why are we pushing on this? Why is the foundation putting $10 more million dollars in the implementation over the next two to three years? Because we have a fragmented health care delivery system. <coughs> If your mission is to improve the health of individuals and the, the, the and health of America, you can't do that in a fragmented system. Nurses can, working with others, help to do that. Can, they can address the racial and uh, disparities that continue to exist. They can look at uh, not just keeping people here longer, and keeping them on earth longer, but actually look at the quality of life years. The quality of life. And you know, uh, address the, the you know what costs us the most: chronic disease, chronic disease. And so we we, we found so many uh, examples of things that were working across the United States, but it hasn't been scaled up. Why? Because of the shortage of primary care providers, and the, the number of physicians in in who uh, who choose primary care coming out of the, their residencies is hasn't changed in the last 10 years. So the Affordable Care Act of, of will say 32 more, 32 million more individuals will be on the rolls by 2014. How will we provide care for those individuals? We cannot provide it with the kind of work that we have now with the individuals who are delivering care now, the way that they're delivering care. We continue to have a high cost uh, the federal uh, budget deficit uh, it is a large part of that has to do with health care. Wages are stagnated in, in there. So this is the burning platform. And the Robert Johnson Foundation says we must find a way to address these challenges and nursing has, has the, the ability to do that. So this, this is the report, if you haven't seen it. Uh, and and it, it is a blueprint. There are eight recommendations, 43 sub-recommendations, that if we were to implement them across the nation, we believe that it would have changed the healthcare system. So this vision, back to that vision statement, access to high quality, I'd say person-centered, but I'll say patient-centered care, in a system where nurses contribute as essential partners. To do this, we have this campaign for action that focuses on, on these things, education, practice, leadership, collaboration, and the need for data. In education, you know, you see how the campaign is working. We take the recommendations. Uh, those, those four recommendations, this, these are the four that we're, we're working on. We want to give you some evidence to back up that recommendation. So we found a significant association between educational levels and patient care outcomes. And you can read any of those, those, those studies that we have listed here. So solid evidence that if you increase the amount of education of nurses, that you have less uh, hospital and, and health system acquired condition. Only six percent of nurses who graduate uh, with associate degrees go on to get an, uh, an advanced degree, as compared to twenty percent of nurses with, with baccalaureate degrees. And we need more nurses with, with advanced degrees to be able to serve in roles of primary care practitioners educators and scientists. In terms of our practitioners, we, you know, and this goes to the, the first recommendation, we found creative care models that maximize 
the, the time staff spent with patients um, and nurse practitioners and found that as a result of that, they, whatever we, the recommendations were for their own self-care, they adopted them, them more. <coughs> Evidence, uh, these were from meta analysis showing uh, that the advanced practice registered nurses and physicians can provide the same type of care for, for, for a set of services. So, as I was drawing on the board, and I had three circles, and I said here was you know, physician practice, here was advanced practice nurses. There's this big middle of overlap, and that's what we're talking about when we talk about uh, trying to increase the ability of nurses to practice in accordance with their education. It's that big middle that accounts for a large portion of chronic disease management. And so we have cited several studies, Office of Technology Assessments, back, look at that, 25 years ago. <laughs> they said the same thing. <laughs> and the Office of Technology Assessment isn't comprised of, of nurses, it's comprised of very smart people, mostly doctoral prepared, and they use data. And the data said 25 years ago, oh, we should use more of practitioners to help deliver primary care. Randomized close trials that were published in JAMA, uh, and two cochrane reviews also said that the better care, and no study showed uh, uh, care is better in states that do not allow advanced practice nurses. So in states, the 14 that do, care is, is equal as the, the, the uh, Others that do not, and in, in fact, uh, that it, I really would suggest you you read uh, these studies if you need the evidence. Uh, please go read it uh, as as we did. This is just a uh, display the states uh, that are independent practice states and the states that uh, require uh, supervision for for prescribing and the states that require supervision for diagnosis, treating, and prescribing. Collaboration, that we must have more collaboration if we're going to really have truly patient-centered healthcare teams, and we must have more leadership for nurses to be able to help change the, the quality of care. A Gallup survey that we did in 2010 found these were 1,500 opinion leaders, some of the brightest people in the world, people running uh, uh, large businesses, people in, in the Senate, uh, people who, who were uh, delivering uh, various types of services. And they said, nurses should do more. They have, they have the ability, but they're not doing more, to reduce errors, and that they have to have more input and impact in planning and policy development. So a survey of 100,000 United States hospitals uh, that says that nurses only account for 6% of hospital board members. Only 6%. Now a little more hospital history for you. Let's see if you get this one right. Who were the first CEOs of hospitals? Nurses. Nurses. Remember that majority of hospitals emerge from religious societies. Uh, and, and, and those sisters literally were sisters. <laughs> and they were nurses. Been running hospitals for a long period of time, you know, and the, we need to get back there as opposed to the physicians represent 20 percent of, of board members. So, here's an example again, and I talked about transforming care at the bedside, and you can you can you can see that uh, this evidence that we, we published this is, is in Health Affairs, by the way, the journal uh, of solid evidence you know, of if you allow nurses to leave at every level that they can achieve better outcomes. And then the data piece uh, that we need, and we need data, data not just on nurses, but also on other health professions. To the diversities, we need to make sure that everyone is capable of providing culturally competent care. So it's not just about increasing the number of Hispanics or increasing the number of men. We need everyone to be able to provide that culturally competent care and so that we can uh, address the issues of of, I 